makers of Campbell Soups present the Campbell Playhouse. Orson Welles, producer. Good evening. This is Orson Welles. Our offering tonight, the celebrated dinner at eight, is among other things, an object lesson for the overwhelming number of people who believe that dinner, preferably to be called supper, and primarily a meal to be eaten at the close of day for the purpose of sustenance against hunger, is to be shared, except on rare occasions, only with the members of their intimate family. George S. Kaufman and Edna Ferber, however, setting their play in the semi-rarefied atmosphere of the semi-upper circles of New York society, preferred to deal with dinner as an almost unimportant part of a weird social proceeding that can't be known as a dinner party. Actually, we're never shown the dinner in Dinner at Eight. But we are shown the highly involved maneuverings necessary to bring the Dinner at Eight dinner party into existence, along with the colorful incidents and the intertwining lives of those who finally participate in it, including Mr. Larry Renault, the once so great film star who made the greatest appearance of his life in the long run by not appearing at all at the dinner party at which he would have been at least a featured player. Our guest stars tonight are three. Marjorie Rambeau, Hedda Hopper, and Lucille Ball. Miss Hopper, of course, was a distinguished actress before ever she branched out into her present combination career of acting and columning. Miss Lucille Ball is the beautiful and talented young lady whose position in Hollywood is becoming increasingly more important and Marjorie Rambeau, certainly one of the first talents of the theater, is now carving out for herself a new career in motion pictures, recently cemented by her thoroughly brilliant performance in Primrose Pack. But before tonight's story, dinner at eight, Mr. Ernest Chappell has a seasonal reminder for the ladies, Mr. Chappell. Thank you, Orson Welles. And that reminder is this. Whether you at your house have dinner at eight or supper at six, I hope you're not forgetting the good health rule Hot soup for cold days. Certainly these February days are real soup weather. Then there's just nothing more heartwarming than piping hot plates of vegetable soup, the good old-fashioned homey kind. A Campbell's vegetable soup is just that kind, and that's why more and more women are giving up making vegetable soup and turning to Campbell's. You see, you can tell instantly that Campbell's vegetable soup is made the good old-fashioned home way. You can tell it in the deep flavor of the rich, slow-simmered beef stock. You can tell it in the taste of the garden vegetables, 15 different vegetables all told. And most of all, you can tell it by the way everybody all around the table enjoys this stout, nourishing vegetable soup of Campbell's. So my cold weather reminder is this. Serve Campbell's vegetable soup just once, and I believe your family will enjoy it so much that they'll suggest you let Campbell's make your vegetable soup for you from then on. You will try it, won't you? And now, Orson Welles in Dinner at Eight with Hedda Hopper, Marjorie Rambeau, and Lucille Ball. Hello? Is this Dr. Talbot's home? This is Miss Jordan, Miss Oliver Jordan. Oh, hello, Lucy. This is Millicent. How are you, darling? Listen, Lucy, dear, I'm giving a little dinner for Lord and Lady Ferncliffe. You know they're on here from England. I want you and the doctor to come. A week from tonight, Friday. I'm only asking a few people whom I know they'd like. I'm inviting you informally like this because the time's so short, and anyway, it's only a small dinner. Yes, that's right. Friday, the 23rd at 8 o'clock. Oh, that'll be fine. Goodbye. Oh, Gustav. Yes, madam. Mr. Jordan, I will be out to dinner. I don't know about Miss Paul. I'll have to ask her. Hello, darling. You're up early. Hey, Gustav, you must see that my coffee's warmer than this. Ah. Uh. Very good, madam. Uh, we could have had breakfast together if I'd known, <clears throat> unless you think people might talk. Hmm, you'll be home early, won't you, dear? Uh, the way business is, I might just as well not leave home at all. Oh, Oliver, did I tell you? I've got the Ferncliffe. What? Lord and Lady Ferncliffe, they get in this morning on the Aquitania. I sent them a radio last night, and they're coming to dinner Friday. Wasn't that bright of me? Mm, yes, if you want the Ferncliffe's. I know, just a small dinner. What do you think? Ten's a nice number. Oh, fascinating number. Of course, it's terribly short notice. I thought I'd ask the Torbits, the Doctor and Lucy, the Ferncliffe's, and you and I. That's six. And your precious Carlotta Van... Carlotta! Would you like me to ask I her? haven't seen her since she came back. 
Now, let me see. I'll need just one more couple and an extra man. I think maybe uh, uh, I'll Look have... here, dear. I if you're looking for another couple, I wish you'd ask Dan Packard and his wife. Ask that woman to my house with the Millicent, film clip? Millicent, dear, believe me. I wouldn't ask this if it weren't important to me. You know that. Packard's become a big man the last year or so. I don't want to go into details, but it's uh, it's very important. Oh, Oliver. Morning. Uh, good morning, Paula. Yeah, what Paula. are you doing lolling about in boudoirs? What's become of the shipping business? Yeah, what indeed. I won't be home for dinner, Mother. Paula, what about this afternoon? I've got to go to the office. Uh, Paula, where will we meet? Uh, Millicent, uh, you will invite the package, won't you? Oh, well, if it's as important as you say. Believe me, it is. Oh, well. Thanks, thanks. Uh, drop you, Paula. Walking. Uh, Paula? Goodbye. Yes, Mother. Paula, I'm lunching at the colony, but I can meet you. Oh, Mother, I can meet you this afternoon. I, I simply can't. Well, for a girl that's being married in three months, you're certainly casual. When do you expect to get things? If Ernest had any idea what... Ernest says I'm a flawless fiancé. Oh, by the way, uh, what was all that about last night? What? Ernest called up this morning in a perfect dither. When you were up, he asked to talk to me. Oh, yes? Did I know how you were feeling and were you any better? He said he brought you home at ten last night with a terrible headache. Oh, yes, I did have, but I'm quite all right now. I distinctly heard you come in at four this morning. Well, I, uh, I went out again. I took three aspirin and my headache vanished and there was only eleven o'clock and, uh, Liz called up and said there was a marvelous party going on. So I went out again. Well, I hope you've got charm enough to explain that to Ernest. Where was the party? Oh, around. Uh, we went over to 21. 21. Always 21. Hello, Aunt Hattie. Someday I'm going to find out what goes on at 20. Yes, and at 22, too. Mother, I've just got to run. Oh, all right, but I insist that tomorrow you'll take... All right, tomorrow. Bye, Mother. Bye, Aunt Hattie. Did Bye. The, did the Ferncliffs accept? Oh, I got that cable this morning. How many are you having? Only ten. Ten's a good number. Oliver insists upon asking those packets, those awful packets. Oh, some business thing or other. Oh, he's bad enough, but his wife, she, she's his second wife, you know, years younger. Nobody knows where she came from. Of course, with his money. Nobody I... marries for money anymore, Millicent, because there isn't any. Well, there's one good thing. I've got the Talbots. Oh, but what am I going to do about Carlotta Van? When did she come back to America? A few days ago, I ran into her at the colony, of course. I think she's poisonous. Oh, but I've got to have her here sometime. When I think of the way she behaved that summer at Aunt Eve, oh, you'd think a woman that had been on the stage as long as she had, a woman of her age. Oh, but I've simply got to have her. Have her by all means, if you're sure you don't like her. She just fits in. I don't suppose that packet woman will be up at this hour. Oh, dear, when I think of that voice. Hello? Could I speak to Mrs. Packard, please? This is Mrs. Oliver Jordan. Is Mrs. Packard up yet? But I've got to run, Millie. If you're not at those 14th Street sales by 10, you might as well be dead. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, Miss Packard? Oh, how do you do, Miss Packard? This is Miss Oliver Jordan. Yes, Mrs. Oliver Jordan. Uh, Mrs. Packard, Mr. Jordan and I are giving a small dinner for Lord and Lady Ferncliffe, two very dear friends of ours, and I'd like... <laughs> I'm so pleased. You see, I've been meaning for quite a while. <sighs> excuse me. Please excuse me, but don't you want to know the date? It's a week from tonight, Friday, the 23rd. Uh, dinner late. Thank you, Mrs. Jordan. I, uh, uh... Oh, goodbye. Tina. Tina! Yes, Miss Packard? Oh, what time is it now? Half past four. Oh, when a person has to lie in bed like this, a person forgets all about the time. What did Dr. Talbot say? Is he coming right away? Well, he asked, were there any symptoms? And I said, no, I didn't think so. So he said, all right, then, sometime this afternoon. Sometime this afternoon. Nobody cares what happens to a person around here. Get me that other box of candy, the big one. Yeah. Hmm. Not that big one. You dope the other big one. Yes, Miss Packard. Ah. Oh, I used to like candy wrapped in different colors. You didn't know what was in each color until you bit into it. Now I know what's in each color. This is bad as if it weren't wrapped at all. It's worse. You have to take this paper off. Get me the other box, Tina. Yes, Miss Packard. And leave this one here, too. Mm. Take a big piece like this. It looks like it's filled with cream. You bite into it. What is it? Nuts. Jordan, I. Jordan, I. Yes, Mr. Fawcett. Just a minute. Young woman, where's Mr. Jordan? I'm sorry, have you an appointment? I don't need an appointment. I'm Carlotta Vance. If you'll sit down, madam, I'll tell him you're here. And don't call me, madam. Hey, you can't go in there. No, no, no. Oh, Oliver, darling. What a lot of this is a surprise. Uh, excuse me just a minute, dear. This splendid. is pretty important. Uh, once again, Fosdick, the Castilian isn't sailing tomorrow. There's no use sending her out when she hasn't got enough cargo to keep her down in the water. She can go next week. Ducky. I don't care about the Santa Clara. She'll have to wait, too. Ducky, you're handsome. I don't ever. care if no Jordan boat has missed a sailing in 60 years. 
They're going to miss them now. What distinguished gray at the temples. Oh, uh, Oliver, you do look uh, sweet. Excuse me, Fosdick. I have to call you later. No. Lotta, well, you're looking marvelous. Do I? Really, do I? Don't uh, I? Sit down. Let me look at you. Uh, what are you doing over here? I'm trying to mend the shattered fortune. <laughs> you picked a good day for it, and the right part of town, too. If you look out at the window, you can see all our financiers sitting on those benches. Now, come on. Who did you come all the way down to the battery to see? Not me. Well, not to deceive you. I came down to see a Mr. Nosy Pants that calls himself a customs inspector. Why shouldn't I own six fur coats? Perfectly reasonable. And then, having straightened out Mr. United States cu uh, Customs Inspector Gestapo, what did I cite but the Jordan line? Huh. And I says to myself, maybe the old gent is in. And here you are. I'm delighted, Carlotta. But why really did you... Uh, Oliver, uh, darling, I'm as flat as a mill pond. I haven't assumed... Oh, come now, Carlotta. How about all those gilt-edged securities? A and your theater? My theater. Why, that theater alone ought to bring you enough to live on. Mm -hmm. That's my chief reason for coming over. To try to get rid of that rat trap. <laughs> well, what's the matter with it? May I take you for a stroll down 42nd Street and a little look at the Carlotta Vance Theater? It's between the Flea Circus and a Chili Bowl. <laughs> it's had six weeks of booking in the last two years special matinees of a Greek actress named Maria Coriopolis playing Sophocles, How Are You, in the original Greek. <laughs> that filled a long-felt want. Yes. Five months later, they sucked in a little gem entitled Papa Love Mama. Three days. Mm. This season, they haven't taken the lock off the door. It's now known as the Spider's Rendezvous. Yes. But you can't collect rent from them. You know, when he gave me that theater, I thought it was a pretty magnificent thing of the old boy. I wish now I'd taken a sandwich. Oh, oh now, Carlotta, you always exaggerate... I'll bet you're just rolling in wealth. The kind of wealth that I have, that isn't worth a nickel today. What have I got? Railroad, oil, cotton? That's what they gave you in my day. I could only take what they had. Well, I wish there was something I could do to straighten your tangle out for you. I don't think any of my friends need a theater now. But as far as your stocks are concerned, those things are certainly good. So is your Jordan stock. You're not thinking of selling that? Well, I don't know. Should I? Much rather you wouldn't just at this time. We've been hit as everybody else has. If you sold it now, I'm afraid you wouldn't get what it's worth. Well, I'd expect to do something on it. You wouldn't want to buy it back yourself, would you? I'd uh, like to, but uh, it'll be pretty difficult just now. Well, I've always thought of you as having all the money in the world. Yeah, I thought so, too, for a few years. Why, when I was a young man, You I... were so sweet, dear Oliver, and so serious and respectable. I was very fond of you, dear. I was very much in love with you, Carlotta. I was something, wasn't I? Remember, they named everything after me. Cigars, racehorses, perfume, battleships. I'll never forget the day you were 21, Oliver, and you asked me to marry you. Uh, what a young fool you must have thought me. I thought it was sweet of you. I even went home and wept a little. They didn't often ask me to marry them. Yes? Mr. Packard is here now, Mr. Jordan. Oh, send him right in. Hey, you won't mind, Carlotta. Dan Packard, quite a fellow. Big Western stuff. Used to be a miner. Oh, I'm just going. Don't you know well, man, in that birdcage. Hey, Jordan, what kind of a... I beg your pardon. Uh, Lotta, this is Dan Packard, Miss Carlotta Vance. How do you do? Uh, Carlotta Vance? Wait a minute, you don't... Well, I know you. I saw you... Uh... Yes, I know. I know what you're going to say. You saw me when you were a little boy. Well, I say you're a liar. <laughs> Way back when I was a punk in Montana, bunches rode 40 miles into Butte just to see you. Sutton's really? Opera House. What was that piece you was in? You wore pants, I remember. Yes, well, we had to have something more than just talent to be an actress in those days. Nice to have seen you, Mr. Packard. I'll be running along before you remember seeing me in a bath. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll call you, Carlotta. Look here, you're dining with us next week. Uh, Friday, isn't it? Am I? Well, of course you are. So are you, Dan. Uh, but I'll see you before that, Carlotta. All right, oh, goodbye. Goodbye, Luckin' Bar. Uh, what'd she call me? <laughs> Sit down, Dan. How have you been? I can only stay a minute. I'm running down to Washington at 5.30. Got to drop up home, pick up a bag. Bunch of us going down. The president needs a little straightening out, looks like. Uh, Dan, uh, the reason I asked you to come in, uh, I want to put up something to you. Uh, sure, go right ahead. It's about the uh, Jordan line. We find ourselves facing, uh, well, it's it's like this. Go on, what's bothering you? Kind of up against it? Well, you probably know about our business. We're strictly freight carriers. New York, southern coast, Havana, Port-au-Prince. I needn't tell you what's happened to trade down there. Of course, it isn't going to last forever. But if I, what I want to know is, uh, if it does take a little longer than we figure, would you be in a position, you and your associates, to uh, sort of uh, tide us well, over? i tell you the truth, Jordan. I don't think you've got much to offer. Best thing you now, can do... Now, just a minute, Packard. The Jordan line is one of the best known in the shipping world. I know Our that. Our boats have traveled the ocean for a century. We started with clipper ships, and we, we're not going to stop now. I'll uh, tell you what I'll do. You get together some figures on this thing, and you do that balance sheets, assets, total tonnage, what the 
boats cost when Bill lists the stockholders. How about that? Pretty widely held? No, it's uh, held quite closely. Half a dozen people in all. Well, let me have a list of them. All right. You understand, Packard, this is confidential. Sure, sure. I just want a list. And uh, it's got to be... You quick. give me that dope, and I'll let you have an answer in 48 hours. Oh, that's, uh, that's very kind of you. I'll do what I can for you, Jordan. Uh, everything I can. So long. Bed again? What's the matter? I don't feel good. And take off your hat when you come into my bedroom. Anyway, tip it. Look at me. Never sick a day in my life. I go out and do things. Tina, yes, Mr. tell Packard. Charles to pack me yes. for overnight. Yes, Mr. yes, sir, I go out and do things. Well, that's because you're an extrovert and I'm an introvert. A what? Dr. Talbot says you're an extrovert and I'm an introvert, and that's why I have to be quiet a good deal and have time to reflect Reflect Reflect? What have you got to reflect about? i got to think and act at the same time. That's what... You know why I'm going to Washington tonight? Because the president wants to consult me about the affairs of the nation. That's why. What's the matter with him? Everything's the matter with him. That's why he's standing for me, and I'll tell you something else. If you want to know, it wouldn't surprise me a bit if he offered me a cabinet job. And what do you know about that? Oh, there was a dinner in New York once, and... All the girls got candies full of diamonds. Well, we ought to be married to some of the guys that I see. You learned to preach. Well, I went into an office this afternoon. Fellow begged me. Got uh, turns out he can't even keep a little little business going. I juggle fifty things, and he can't handle one. Here's the blow off. I've been trying to get hold of just his kind of layout for the past two years, and the sap hands it to me. What? He, only he don't know it. Going to send me a full list of stockholders. I buy up what I need, and it's all over but the shooting. Little Dan Parker owns the best shipping line between here and the tropics, and Mr. Oliver Jordan is out on his ear. Oh, we're going there for dinner next Friday, and yeah. I'm going to wear my new pink. Well, what? Mrs. Oliver Jordan called me up, and they're giving a swell dinner, and we're invited. Well, we're not going. Oh, yes, we are. Well, he's a sucker. That's his funeral. Business is business. I can't go walking into the man's house President's and eating... President's in Washington and all those rummies, but you can't go anywhere eating with me. His bre- we're not going. Once in our life, we get asked to a classy house, and I got a new dress that'll knock their eye out, and we're going. We are not going. We are so, you big crook. You pull a dirty deal, and it ruins my social chances when you can't get away with oh, it. Oh, go lay down. I won't. We're not going, and that's all there is to it. Oh, Danny, please, Danny. No, Kitty we're not going. Kitty wants to go. Kitty wants to no, see all the great big lords and no. ladies in the beautiful house. Danny Wanny, it's for Lord Ferncliff and Lady Lord Ferncliff. Lord Ferncliff? Yeah, please, Danny Wanny. What'd you say? It's for Lord and Lady Ferncliff from Ferncliff. England. They're an English Ferncliff. lord and lady. You know who it is, don't you? He's one of the richest men in England. Is that rich? I've been trying to meet him for years. He and I Ferncliff. did it. You know what I'll do? I'll buy up that Jordan stock through dummies. I'll use Baldridge and Whitestone fellas like that keep my name out of it. Out of what? Out of getting control of his line, I told you. You did not. You never tell me anything. All right, all Dr. right. Robert i got to be going first. I want to break. Bye, kitten. Uh, uh, tell Charles to meet me with my bag and be at the office at 11 o'clock. So long, kitten. Goodbye. Tina, quick. Get me the other jacket with the feathers. Oh, yes, Miss Packard. And get my pearls out of the case and clear those things off the bed. Fix it up a little. Give me that atomizer. Oh, give me that book, the big one. Where yeah, is it? Look around. It fell down. Hurry up. It's there someplace. Is this it? Murder, Macy's window, Harlow. No, 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 no. The one Dr. Talbot gave me. It's a big, thick one. It says the aspects of the adult mind. I got it. It was under the Marabou hot water bag. Well, give it to me. All right. Now, get out. Get out. Yes, ma'am. All right, Dr. Talbot. Thank you, Tina. Well, hello. What's all this? Hello, doctor. Let's have your post. Wayne. You don't ever come anymore unless I send for you. Well, I'm very busy, Kitty. You know how busy I am. Oh, but I'm so lonely, Wayne. You've got to develop your inner resources. Do you read that book? I tried, but just to read, a a girl could go crazy. Well, you've got to take it easy. You're tired of me. No, I'm not, dear, but I'm... Well, then put your arms around me. You can let go of my wrist. I guess so. No sense taking your pulse now. Nonsense, Hattie. A cup of tea will be good for you. And me, too. What's this, I wonder? It's watercress, Billy, with mayonnaise. The two things I hate most in the world, together. Oh, I'm 
simply there. Mrs. Johnson. Yes, go so. Uh, Mr. Johnson's phone. He regrets so much that he cannot come to dinner on Friday the 23rd. He will be out of town. Oh, Sorry. well, I think I've got to begin all over again. I bet if I called one man this morning, I called ten. Would you believe it? There just isn't an extra man in all New York. Who'd you expect, the Chase National Bank? You're pretty fresh for a bellboy. Where have you been so long? I come as quick as I could. You're so particular with that 20-year-old stuff, I had to go several places. Hey, wait a minute. Where's my change? I told you I had to go to a new place. Cost a half a dollar more. Who told you? You had to go to a new place. Nobody, nobody did. Then you can go out and buy your own liquor from now on. Excuse me, miss. Oh. Hello, uh, Miss Jordan. Close the door, boy. Okay. Right you are, Mr. Renault. It is Mr. Renault, isn't it? Mr. Reynolds, the great motion picture actor. <laughs> you crazy little fool. <laughs> Kiss me, Mr. Reynolds. Now, Hattie, who can I get? Oh, I'd love to have somebody exciting. That is, if he'd fit in with the fern cliffs. Nothing exciting fits in with the fern cliffs. Get somebody that'll go with Carlotta. Give her a little fun. Get her an actor or something. An actor? Let me see. I Let know me... a movie star. Oh, I don't know any movie stars. Oh, I about Larry Renault. Was he still in town? He was yesterday. How do you know? I read it in Lenny Lyons' column. Oh, it's a marvelous idea. We met him three years ago in on TV. He was simply... I read two interviews with him yesterday. He was wearing a black moray lounging robe with a white monogram, and he's staying at the Dual Plaza. I'll put him next to Carlotta, and then give her Dr. Talbot on the other side. Yes, yeah, see if you can get him first, and then let nature take its course. Oh, Larry, do you love me? You know I do. <laughs> well, I just thought I'd ask. Oh, Larry, darling, let's go somewhere tonight, you and I. Let's get a car and drive up the river and have dinner. Huh? You crazy little fool. That's a, tonight's the night I'm having dinner at your mother's, don't you know that? Oh, Larry. You know, if she ever found, finds out I know you... Oh, Larry, don't go. I have to. Larry. What? Will you promise me something? What? Don't drink tonight. That mother's Oh, alone. Paula, don't get maternal. I know, but I want them to see you at your best. A man can take a drink or two and That's so... just it, Larry. If you take one, you'll always take another. Oh, no, then... stop it, Paula. I won't All have right, you... All right, my darling. Don't let quarrel. Please don't let What about the plan? Larry, when do you start right. rehearsal? Monday? I think so. I just had a call from Max Kane. He's coming right over. I suppose everything's settled. You have a drink? No. Well, here's to us. Yeah, I suppose the show's all right. Max seems to think so anyway. You know how these agents are. They run you practically. He may be right a season in the legitimate before I go back to pictures. Let him see me. They like that sort of thing. It's such a romantic part. I think you'll be more... Sure, the only thing I've read that I thought was worth doing. The play's not much, but the part is very interesting. It's practically the only male part in the play. So there's that beach It doesn't amount to anything. Here's one little scene, and I dominate that. Oh, Larry. You know, it's so funny. Less than a month ago, I thought I was in love with Ernest. You were just one of those million-dollar movie stars. Huh. Only a month ago. But that was another person, a very young person. Hey, Paula, listen to me. I want to tell you something. I know, I know. Ernest is just the sort of young man I ought to marry. That's right. You're the sort the girls are always warned against. Well, I don't care a hoot what people say. I know your life is different from mine. I know all the things you've been. I know all the times you've been married. But I'm still married. You think I could still love Ernest after all this? After all we've been to each other? Paula. Come oh, back. You don't know anything about me. All right. Tell me you murdered a man in Alaska. That's what I mean. You're not even grown up. You're a kid of 19. You're 19 and I'm 40. Uh, almost 40. Darling, I hate college boys. Oh, darling, it isn't your age. It's everything. You never know anything but Park Avenue and butlers and Pierre's. That's not true. I've got a job. Oh, I go to work sure. every day. It's the fashion to have a job in your crowd. You don't know what it means to be up against it, to be fighting them every second, to pull yourself up hand over hand and have them waiting up there with a knife to cut the rope. Well, I'm not through yet. I'll show them if they think I've finished. But, Larry, what's that got to do with it? What's that got to do with our love? Love. Love. You want to know the truth? I love you. Yeah, as much as I can love any woman. 
But at my age, it isn't real love anymore. There's been too many. I've been in love a hundred times. I've had three wives. Would you like to know about my three wives? No. Well, there was Violet. She was a vaudeville hoofer and still is. I bet she hasn't changed her act in 20 years. Rooming houses and dirty kimonos and fried egg sandwiches. It was that kind of a marriage. We used to fight like wild cats. And I broke into pictures and I left her. Then there was Edith. She was crazy about my profile, always talking about it. She was society. Pity like you, Paula. <laughs> it's funny, I never thought of that before. Anyhow, we were happy for about six months. And Hollywood got her. Parties, drinks, pretty rough in those days. And one night, you know the rest of it. On the car alone. Drunk. Over the cliff. You were really in love with her, weren't you, Larry? As for Diana, well, you know Diana. She's at the top of the heap now. She's the biggest draw of any woman in pictures. Ambitious? I never saw a woman like her. Anything to get on and knife me to get there. Always saying someday she'd be bigger than I was. And now... Well, there they are, the three of them. Pretty picture, isn't it? I won't tell you about the others. Ah, they swarmed on me every kind, age and description. Paula, listen to me. Larry, I love you. Don't you see that nothing else matters in the whole Paula, world? Paula, don't say that. Larry, it's no use. Nothing you can say will make any difference. Paula. Difficult. I'm going to tell them now, tonight. Paula, you mustn't. I'm going to tell everybody. You can't do a thing like that. I won't let you understand. I won't let you smash up your I'll life. I'll smash it up if I want to. I'm going to. straight home and tell Mother and Dad. And tonight I'm going to tell Ernest. Ah, oh, that's my age and that Mac. Paula, I want you to promise no. me. Paula, you've got to promise my me. My mind is made up, Larry. It's no use. All right. Hey, don't you have to get up? Ooh. You, uh, know Mr. Kane, Miss Jordan? Oh, sure. How's the little lady? I'm splendid. And you? Top of the bottle. I'll telephone you, Larry, later. Please think of what I said. Am I, uh, buttoning? No, I was just saying goodbye. Pearls and your oysters. Goodbye, Larry. Goodbye. Well, how's the great profile? Been out today or just sticking around here? No, I wasn't feeling well. I slept kind of late and went out to dinner. What's that straight whiskey you're drinking? Uh, cocktail? if you want to call it that. All right, no offense. It's none of my business. Only why didn't you go up to McDermott's and get a workout every day? I'm all right. Take some of that blubber off Once here. I get into rehearsal, I'll get in shape. Yeah, just keep on with the drinks that size. That'll fix you. What's up? You see Bauman? I thought maybe he might come up with you. Bauman? No, he didn't come up. Uh, look, Larry, I got a little disappointing news for you, kind of. What's the matter? Well, I go in there this afternoon, he's sitting there. A face like a gargoyle. I start talking to him about the play, and what does he do? He says he's got to go south next month. He's sick. He can't do the play. Well, he's got to do it. Everything's settled. Well, it was talked over, but uh, it wasn't really. You see, Larry, unless you got it down in black and white... What are you white, talking about? Well, and, and then sometimes that... Well, take it away from me. He's not the only producer, the cheap crook. Oh, sure, sure. Bauman's no good. That's right. That's how we got where he is. But look, that ain't the point. What does he do? He goes and turns the play over to Joe Stengel. Joe Stengel. Yes. Yeah. I like the idea of going with Stengel, you know, Max. They tell me he's quite a character. Yeah. He understands I'm to be starred, of course, and then well, that's my, uh... just it. What? Because... Look, Larry, I don't want you to blame me for this. I've been plugging for you for months. What my... are you trying to tell me? Now, don't go up in the air about it because there's sure to be something. You else. mean I'm out, you double? You mean I'm out, Larry? Could I help it? Help it? Why you? Dirty little oh, now, swine! Wait a minute. Hold on. All right, I'm a this, I'm a that. But there wasn't anything I could do to stop it. It was all done before I knew anything about it's it. It's your business to know. That's what you're hired for. Who's going to play the part? Cecil Bellamy. Cecil Bellamy. Ah, that piffle English. Why, he's English in the first place. Well, the part says English explorer. All right, I can be English. I can be as English as anybody. I've waited for this play for six weeks. I've had a million things I've oh, turned sure, down. Sure, you know that. Sure, you could. Uh, you can get him yet, Larry. Only, Only think... what? Well, you've been away a long time, see? And, and, and you know the public... Besides, there's a bunch of them who want to work on the stage again. Them picture names. Picture names. You're not going to compare me with them. No, not with them. Well, look, but you see, you're not a talking name. I was in talkies. I made some of the first talking pictures that were made. Yeah, I remember. But the trouble is they forget. See, they forget overnight. You've got to get to work again. Go out there and act. Let them see you. Uh, that's the way they want it. That's the vehicle. Well, now, don't jump down my throat again. But I've got an idea. What kind of an idea? Well, I was thinking about this play again. You know, Larry, I never said anything, but I never did think that that was such a hard part for you. Do you know the part that I would be crazy to play if I was an actor? What? The beachcomber. Oh, beachcomber? Yeah. You're asking me to go on and play a part that is... Get out of here. Go on. Get out. Get, get out, Larry. you miserable... Get out! Uh, Larry, Get please. out before please. I kick I you know, out! I know, but don't make a mistake. Wait a minute. All right. What makes you think the other part isn't right for me? Well, it, think, it's no good. They'll get tired of him. But the other fella, 
comes on once. But a once, that's a once. He goes off. They keep waiting for him to come back, and he never does. Oh, Larry, what a part. Of course, his one scene is very gratifying. It's the high spot of the show. You know what will happen? At the finish, this, uh, uh, what's his name? He's so Bellamy. Yeah, that mug there. That, uh, he'll be trying to take bow, see? You know what will happen? They'll be yelling, Renault, yeah, Renault. Of course, you... I'd be uh, featured. Oh, maybe it'd be smart not to. You yeah, know, you should sneak up on them. But I'd get my regular salary. I mean, what Bauman is going to give me. Well, but, but you can't think of this as salary. Suppose you only get two. Uh, look, I'll tell you what. It's quarter to five. I'll run right down to Stengel's office, fix up an appointment to get you to see him before he leaves. Wait a minute. He mustn't think I'm after this part. Make uh, Stengel come to me. Larry, it isn't done that way. You're the actor. I'm Larry Renault. I don't go to managers with my hat in my hand. and expect me to come for nothing comes up here, sees the luxury. Well, look, you know, you don't, you don't make things very easy for me, bringing managers to actors. Well, maybe he'll do it as a favor to me, who knows. You know, I used to be Joe's office boy. Look, how long are you going to be here? Oh, a long time. I'm not dining too late. Well, if I can do it, I'm good. But look, Larry, darling, if he comes up here, you want to watch his step. We can't afford to let this part get away from us. Ah, Max, I must say you've got a funny slant on this whole thing. It's not I that can't afford it. Stengel can't afford it. Sure, sure, afford. sure. Yeah, well, goodbye. Goodbye, anyway. Max. Yeah? Here's a, a funny thing. I wonder if you could let me have $5 or a taxi. I didn't get out the bank. I'm going uh, this dinner. <laughs> what do you think? I've got 17 cents. Yeah, I see. Very funny. But look, I, I, I only got enough to get back to the uh, office. Max. I, I'll, I'll bring it to you when I come back. When I come back, Larry, everything will be all right when I come back. Lotta, dear. I just popped in. I thought Oliver might be home. Well, if there's anything I could tell him for you. No, it's business. Uh, these just came, madame. Oh, how lovely. Talisman roses color. Exquisite. Oh. It's my favorite rose. Aren't you going to read the card? That's more important than the flowers, I always think. From the Ferncliffs. Lord and Lady Ferncliff. Oh, how thoughtful of them. Not stinky. Flowers from Stinky? Stinky? Yes. Stinky Ferncliff. All his friends call him Stinky. Oh, I didn't know you even knew them. I think of Stinky loosening up for flowers. Why, <laughs> nobody in London will believe it. Once he dropped a shilling down the grating and he made them dig up Piccadilly to get at it. Why, How amusing. Uh, hello, dear. Hello, darling. Carlotta wants to talk to you, Oliver. I'll be tactful and vanish. <laughs> uh, what's the matter, Carlotta? Something wrong? Oliver Ducky, you won't be cross with Carlotta, will you? I told the man I want to ask you first, but he said it had to be today. There was some sort of meeting, so... Well, and then I got uh, sort of what, worried uh, about it. What are you trying to tell me? Well, Oliver, sweet. Poor Carlotta was so stony broken and was such a chance, so I sold my Jordan soap. So, I hope you don't mind. Uh, who'd you sell it to? His name was... Uh, well, he was really quite a sweet fellow, such a charming manner. The name's right here on the check, Mr. Baldridge, James K. Baldridge. Baldridge, eh? Somebody bought the Jordan stock from the Satterley sisters this afternoon. Only it was a fellow by the name of Whitestone bought theirs. Hmm, your stock must really be worthwhile if all these people want to buy it. I do hope I haven't caused you any trouble, Oliver. No. I'll answer it there. It's probably for me. See you later, Carlotta. Now, Oliver, you shouldn't take business so serious. Smile, dear. Yes? Yes, this is Jordan. Lord Thurncliffe's secretary. Yes. Yes. What's that? Oh, but you must be... Oh, but they can't. Oh, but they can't go to Florida. They're coming here to dinner. Oh, but it's not possible. I'm giving the dinner for them. They've gone. When? Oh, but people don't do things like that. But letting me know at this hour. Oh, I don't care how sudden it was. You should have let... Well, all I can say is I never heard of such a thing in all my life. Never. Mother. What do you want? Mother, I must talk to you. What? It's about Ernest and me. I must talk to you. I, I can't... Oh, Paula, don't bother me now. For pity's sake, don't bother me. I don't want to listen but to mother, your... But, Mother, you don't understand. This is terribly important. Paula, oh, shut up. Shut no, up, I tell you. Let me think. No, listen, dear. Huh? Uh, do you think it, if, I, if I don't come down to dinner, uh, I'm uh, feeling pretty rotten. If I could just go to bed. What's that you're saying? I say I'm feeling pretty rotten, and I... I'm up against a business thing oh, that... Oh, dear, that's a business thing. At a time like this, you talk about a business thing and feeling rotten. Oh, this is a nice time for you to say you're feeling rotten. You 
come to me Mother. with your and you whimpering about Ernest. Some little lovers quarrel. I'm expected to listen to Ernest and business and headaches when I'm half out of my mind. Do you know what's happened to me? I've had the most dreadful day that any woman ever had. Lucy Talbot suddenly found out she was so ill she couldn't come, but Wayne Talbot is coming anyway. So I had to bribe Hattie to come, and it's costing me half my wardrobe to get her to come and eat my dinner. And the dinner's gone wrong. Only you wouldn't care about that. But if you think getting crab meat when you've ordered lobster and... And that fast woman coming in, and now, on top of everything, do you know what's happened? The fern cliffs on coming to dinner. They call up at this hour, those miserable cockneys. They call up and say they've gone to Florida. Florida! And who can I get at this hour? Nobody. I've only got eight people, eight people, eight people. Isn't it a dinner oh, party? And you God. come to me with your idiotic little... I'm the one who ought to be in bed. I'm the one who's in trouble. You don't know what trouble is. You are listening to Orson Welles in the Campbell Playhouse presentation of Dinner at Eight with Hedda Hopper, Marjorie Rambo, and Lucille Ball. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is Ernest Chappell, ladies and gentlemen, welcoming you back to the Campbell Playhouse. In a moment, we will resume our presentation of Dinner at Eight. See that your child gets a quart of milk a day, so counsels the doctor. Yet many a mother of growing children I know finds that easier said than done. So tonight, I have a pleasant and practical suggestion for every mother listening. Have you tried soup as a means of giving your child more of the milk he needs? Let me tell you about four soups in particular that mothers everywhere are choosing for this. They are Campbell's tomato soup, Campbell's pea soup, Campbell's celery soup, and Campbell's asparagus soup. Nearly every youngster likes these soups, and when you prepare any one of them as a cream soup by adding milk instead of water, your child gets the double benefit of the good vegetable nourishment of the soup and the high nutritional value of the milk. Now, let me repeat the Campbell soups I mentioned before. They are tomato, pea, celery, and asparagus. I wish I had the time to describe each soup to you, but I urge you to serve them in turn and find out for yourself how good they are for both the children and the grown-ups in your family, especially when prepared with milk. And now, Orson Welles resumes our Campbell Playhouse presentation of Dinner at Eight with Hedda Hopper, Marjorie Rambo, and Lucille Ball. Hello? What time is it? Time! Time! What time is it? 7.45. Thank you. Hello? Yes, this is Mr. Renault. Yes, I got it. Your man brought it up to me. Listen, my good fellow, I'm not accustomed to being done for hotel bills. I'm a very busy man. My secretary usually attends these things in California at the moment. You get your money, you get it when it suits my convenience. Come in, the door's open. Liberty Hall, huh? Where have you been? You're late. I told you take, I was Take waiting. it easy, take it easy. Um, I brought up Mr. Stengel. Meet Larry Renault, Mr. Stengel. How are you, Mr. Stengel? Mr. Renault. Forgive my formal attire, Mr. Sting. I just finished dressing. It's a frightful Mr. Ball, Renault's got a date it. with some of his Park Avenue friends. Those big picture people, they're pretty social. You know? Yes, I've heard. No, oh, wait. Sit down, Mr. Stengel. Don't you uh, want to take your coat oh, off? Oh, sure he does. Take off your coat, Mr. Stengel. I've only got a minute. Uh, yeah, Larry, suppose we get right down to brass tacks, huh? All right, my good fellow. Well, Stengel, you're going to produce this play. Hmm? You want me to act in it? Well, I'm... Th well, this is just getting acquainted, Larry. Uh, you see, he's crazy to play the part, Mr. Just Stengel. a minute. Let's get this straight. I understand, Mr. Kane here, that you wanted to know if you'd be willing to portray the beachcomber in this thing. Wait a minute. You wanted what's me. So no, no, no. What's so gentlemen, fast? what's the difference? Which one is He wants to do it, and you want him to do it. So what's the difference? A lot of difference. Larry, please. In the first place, if I decide to accept this part, and I don't say I will, it'll have to be built up. <laughs> There's an actor for you. No matter how good the part is, right away they want it built up. <laughs> built up. 
The fellow's got one scene. They find him dead on the beach. This ain't a spiritualism play. No? Well, you're forgetting one thing, Stengel. Don't forget I'm Larry Renault. Larry, please. Shut up. Now listen, Stengel. I'm a name. And I know it, and so do you, and I'm not going to go on and play second fiddle in any cheap English hand. Larry, please. Eight thousand a week. That's what I got. And I was going to get ten only... Well, don't think you're doing me a favor, giving me a part in your ratty little play, because I'm doing you one. I think maybe we're keeping you from your dinner, Mr. Now, Rose. listen, Joe, he doesn't mean I it. I mean, what he mean? Sean, you're doing a second-rate show. You don't want real artists. Well, you're English. Hey, I'm going to give you what you want. Larry, you don't know what you're All right, Max. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll take you to the office. I wouldn't be in your rock. I didn't come to your office, did I? Not Larry Renault. You came to see me. And you know why? Because I'm an important artist. And you're a cheap. Pushcart producer! Pushcart! So with all of you. What is it? What do you want? Why don't you and your pushcart friend let me alone? Oh, Larry, you drunken fool. I bring him up here. I go down on my hands and knees to do it, and you... I, I, I can't believe that any man would... Well, that's that. Just a minute. I've got something to say to you, too. You know what I think? It's you. You that got the play away from Bauman and gave it to Stengel. It's you did me out of that part, you double-dealing rat. I've been suspicious of you all along. You're in with the managers. You've been taking my money and working for them. You don't say. Working for the managers, huh? And taking your money. Me, that you're rid of for 500 bucks in touches. All right. If you think I've been lying to you all this time, you're going to get the truth now. Renault, you're through. Get out! I'll get out, yes, and stay out. But get this first. I never worked so hard to put over anybody as I did you. You think I told you all the things I tried? No. Because I couldn't come to you and tell you what they said. I was too sorry for you. You were sorry for me? For all, why, every time I walked into the booking office, they leaned back and roared. Called me Maxie the Grave Snatcher. And the radio. Remember I told you I hadn't seen the right fella? I saw him. Only he saw me first. Trying to throw a scare into me. Well, let me tell you, Max. Uh, yeah, you never was an actor. But you did have looks. Now, they're gone. You don't have to take my word for it. Look in the mirror. They don't lie. Take a good look. Look at those pouches under your eyes. Take a look at those creases. You got wattles under your chin. You sagged like an old woman. Get a load of yourself. What's the matter? Afraid? You ain't seen nothing yet. Wait till you start tramping around the offices looking for a job. No agent will handle you. Wait till you start sitting in ante rooms hours and hours, giving your name to office boys who never heard of you. Get through, Renault. Get through in pictures and plays and vaudeville and radio and, and everything. You're a corpse and you don't know it. Go get yourself buried. That's impossible. That gold and silver. The association value. All right, you take them out. I went every pawn shop on 6th Avenue. You're a little liar. You never took them anyplace. Say, who are you calling a liar? What do I get out of all this? You're down and out ham? Filthy little rat. How dare you talk to me like that? Okay. Oh, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I didn't mean that, son. I didn't mean to call you. <laughs> Sorry. Listen, son, I've got to have some liquor. I'm sick. You lay it out for me and I'll pay it back to you. Uh, what kind of sucker do you think I've I'll got to have, have it. I've got to. I'll pay you back. I'll pay you back tomorrow. Ma, see? you won't be here tomorrow. What? You hide me. Now you look swell sleeping in the park in that monkey suit. idea what I've been going through. If you knew what I'm going through right now, I've been planning to see that Heedy Lamour picture for two months, and now I can't Isn't go... Larry Renault in person better than going to a movie? No, he's a has-been. And Carlos a van? She's a has-been, has-been. All right, all right. I'd have let you off if I could, but who was I going to get at a quarter to seven but relative? All right, all right. I'm a relative, and I'm here. Who's that? Uh, how do you do, Mr. Note? Uh, how do you do? Uh, how do you do? Mr. Note, uh, the hotel finds itself in an awkward predicament. We just had a communication from some very old clients of ours. 
Mr. and Mrs. Sherman Montgomery. Possibly you know them. Uh, they've been making this their home for many years, every winter, and have always occupied this particular suite, the 39C. Well, you, you know how people are. Nothing will do but these rooms. They say it's like home to them. Now, uh, we've just been notified that they're coming in tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow, just like that. Tomorrow. Uh, so, uh, under the circumstances, I, I'm afraid we must ask you for these rooms. Oh? Well, uh, what are the other rooms have you got for me? Well, that's just the trouble. Uh, there, there isn't any place we can put you. There isn't anything that uh, isn't taken, you know, old customer. That's uh, all right, sir. Funny, I was about to tell your office I was leaving. I, uh, friends of mine uh, from Palm Beach, uh, private guy. Well, when do you want me to get uh, out? Oh, no, hurry. Uh, shall we say uh, tomorrow morning? All right. We'd be very glad to have one of our people come in and pack your things That's tonight. Right. You're probably pretty busy. Well, I'll tend to it. Well, shall we say uh, noon tomorrow then, Mr. Renault? Yeah. Ah, thank you very much. So sorry to have inconvenienced you in this way. I only had another drink. Just one more drink. Hello. This is Mr. Lawrence Renault. Look, uh, whatever calls there are, don't connect anybody. I'm, uh, busy. Hmm? That's right. Don't connect anybody until you hear from me. They're gonna wait until they hear from me. <laughs> yeah, I've got gas in this room, too. Gas. I never noticed a really high-class background, I must say. Electric lights and gas. A situation like this, what is the name of that show? I remember you. Turn the little knob like that. Right. Lucky it isn't one of those where you have to put a quarter in the meter. Hmm? Ah, that's good. Should have been a writer, I think. I could have used that somewhere or other. I guess I'll... I'll show them. Can't... do this to me. Lovely to see you. Good evening, Mr. Packard. How do you do, Mrs. Jordan? It's indeed a pleasure. So nice Mrs. Packard, may I present my sister, Mrs. Lumis? How do you do? Mrs. Mrs. Packard. Glad to know you. How Glad do you to do? know you. know, for a minute there, I had you wrong. I figured maybe you were Mrs. Ferncliff. Lady Ferncliff, you don't. Know. You were close. I'm pinch hitting for her. Huh? Yes, isn't it too bad Lord Ferncliff was taken desperately ill late this afternoon? Oh, that's and you're too right bad. And you're right. Oh, the doctor said he must go to have some sunshine. You mean he's not coming? Oh, impossible. They rushed him right down to Florida on a special train. Oh, oh, oh the Oh, Dr. Talbot. Oh, hello, Wayne. So glad to see you. How are you? Well, uh, she just felt a little under the weather. And oh, I... I understand. I knew you would. You're looking very lovely, Millicent. Thanks. Uh, let me see now, Mr. Packard. I don't believe you've met Dr. Talbot and Mrs. Packard. Oh, we've met. How do you do? I know Dr. Talbot. She sure does. Uh, he's her father confessor. <laughs> How's old medical? Haven't seen you around the house lately, Doc. I think she gets along very well without me. Don't you, Mrs. Packer? I get along better when you're looking after me. <laughs> I oh, guess that's right, Doc. <laughs> Millicent Lucy said to remember her to the burn cliff. By the way, where are they? Oh, didn't I tell you? Poor dear Stinky. You know, that's what we call Ferncliff. Was taken desperately ill this afternoon, and they had to whirl him down south to save his life. Isn't that a dark chain? Oh, mm. I don't know Hello, why. hello, everybody. Oh, hello, 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 hello. Oh, Millicent, dear, do forgive me. I'm so sorry. He wouldn't stay home. He cried and cried. I just had to bring him. He's so spoiled him since I brought him to America. Aren't you, Avalon? 
He won't be a bit of trouble. He's as good as gold. He'll just sit under my chair as quiet as a mouse. You'll never know he's there. Just throw him a bit of lobster. Isn't he <laughs> too weak? <laughs> Carlotta, have you met all my... Isn't stinky a swine running off to Florida and ruining your whole dinner party? You know, I left here and I went straight to my hotel. And there was his telegram. Off on a fishing trip. Can't you come down? I love your America. Never felt so well in all my life. Molly and I expect you. Telegraph us, Palm Beach. Stinky. I guess he was just kidding in that wire he sent you, Mrs. Jordan. <laughs> Oliver, darling, you haven't said a word to me. Aren't you glad to see me? You know I love you, Carlotta. Then you're not cross with me, dear. You'd have thought I'd done something terrible, Mr. Packard, just because I sold my Jordan stock. I was totally broke, and a man came along and made me the most wonderful offer right out of the blue. Well, I grabbed it. That wasn't so terrible, was it? What do you think, Packard? Was that so terrible? Well, business is business. Every fellow's got to look out for himself. The, uh, that's kind of a world it is, you know. Oh, Dan's no, always sure, known so. how many beans made five, haven't you, Dan? It's that's right, so Kenny. nice to know Dan's always taking care of things. Yeah. Oh, it must be wonderful to be a sheltered woman, Mrs. Packard. A man to look after you, so you never have to worry for yourself. Say, I think that ought to be a cinch for you. I think uh, well, there's one trouble. A man uh, gets you into a shelter, and he thinks you ought to spend the rest of your life thanking him. What good's a shelter to a girl if that's all there is? And most of the time, she's alone in the shelter. <laughs> uh, kitten, uh, now, let me uh, see. We're all here except Mr. Renault. Oh, I do hope he hasn't forgotten. Oh, oh he'll be starring. here. He'll be here. He's just staging an entry. Oh, I'm crazy to see Larry Renault. Oh, good evening, Mother. I Paula, I thought you were gone. You all know my daughter, Paula. Sure. Well, well, Paula, how do you how's the future bride? When are you going to get married? Oh, I... Uh, Oh, where's, the, where's Mr. Renault? Wasn't he going to be here? You said he was. Yes, 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 yes. He's coming. He's just not here yet. Oh. And I don't think we'll wait for Mr. Renault. Uh, Gustav, you may serve dinner. Last Hello. come, last serve. That's the way we used to do out in Montana. I think Avalon is so cute. Avalon? Oh, yes, maybe that is better than Avalon. I've had a lot of peaks, but I don't have any luck with really? them. They just don't like me, you know, like onions. Oh, you like Half past eight. eight. <laughs> Hated them all. We're just going on, Millicent. <laughs> uh, what's uh, the matter, Paula? Is something wrong? Oh, no, no. I'm just going, Dad. If uh, something's bothering you, dear... No, no, no. You go on into dinner. I'll rest here a minute, and then I'll go down and join in. If... Well, whatever you say. Good night, Paula. Good night, Dad. Well, Hello? Hello? Is this the Jewel Plaza? I want to talk to Mr. Larry Renault. Oh, sure. I go to all the shows. What's that? But I tell you, it's important. You've got to connect me. Oh, never mind my name. Just... What? The police. I saw it My name is, is Paula Jordan. I'm sure Mr. Renault hasn't done anything to... What? You... have been listening to Orson Welles in the Campbell Playoffs presentation of Dinner at Eight with Hedda Hopper, Marjorie Rambo, and Lucille Ball. Mr. Wells will be back in a moment to continue our broadcast. Meanwhile, having talked more especially to the ladies earlier this evening, I'd like to take just a handful of seconds now to talk to the men. After a hard day's work, there's something specially comforting and restful to a man in sitting down to an evening meal that includes a good plate of soup. <laughs> Isn't that so? Somehow, soup warms and cheers you all the way down. Now, let's say it's a piping hot plate full of Campbell's vegetable soup. An inviting aroma drifts up from it that sharpens your appetite. 
and tender, luscious vegetables abound in its rich, rugged beef stock. You dip your spoon again and again, and when you've finished the last delicious spoonful, you somehow feel that all's right with the world, that, well, here's an evening well begun. And so, just a hint for you and for your wife. Wouldn't a plate of Campbell's vegetable soup taste good at, uh, say, supper tomorrow night? And now, if you please, Mr. Wells. Ladies and gentlemen, no more appropriate theme song could usher in our interview. Please permit me to present at this time our three guest stars of the evening. Miss Marjorie Rambeau. Good evening. Miss Hedda Hopper. Good evening. And Miss Lucille Ball. Good evening. I know, Hedda, I'm making an awful mistake in being polite to you because it is perfectly certain that this will lead to uh, something uh, vile in your column, but I'm sincerely glad to see you tonight. Well, now comes the but, am I right? Well, in a way, I was wondering whether you're aware of how much time you spent on the telephone in our broadcast this evening. It seemed to me, Heather, that... Well, no uh, matter how long you thought I was on the telephone as Millicent Jordan, I assure you it was really a vacation from phoning for me. You try running a column sometime and see how long you can stay away from the telephone. Perish the thought. I suppose, but it's probably not a coincidence that uh, since the invention of the telephone by Don Amici... Uh, the modern column as we know it uh, has been born, or inversely. If uh, I may say a few words as Carlotta Vance, Mr. Wells. Uh, please, Miss Rambo. Things are so much nicer in those days when there were no columns. I remember... Oh, do tell us what you remember, Miss Vance, when there were no columns and no railroads and no steamboats and no... Now, just one moment. Just because I'm willing to remember my memories and not uh, forget them as ladies, you... Ladies, ladies, I... will you... Uh, Say something, Miss Lucille Ball, to get things more peaceful. Oh, I'd be glad to. On behalf of Kitty Packard, I think Mrs. Jordan and Miss Vance ought to make up their minds to call today, yes. both of them. Just because a girl Thank wants you. to have a little fun and not sit around all the time like a piece of furniture or something, you'd uh, think butter wouldn't melt in their mouths the way those old... Uh, thank you oh, very much, oh. Lucille. You managed to straighten everything out just beautifully. If I may, however, and seriously and truly, I'd like to thank all three of you ladies very much in your own persons. Head opera... Marjorie Rambeau and Lucille Ball. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Good night. Good night, and please come back again, ladies and gentlemen. Carl Otta Vance was Marjorie Rambeau. Millicent Jordan was Hedda Hopper. To whose sponsors of her program, Hedda Hopper's Hollywood, we're indebted for their kind permission in permitting her to be with us tonight. Kitty Packard was Lucille Ball. Oliver Jordan was played by Charles Trowbridge, who first created the part in the Broadway production. Hattie Loomis was played by Clara Blandick, Paula by Mary Taylor, Dr. Talbot was Edgar Berrier, and Max, the agent, was none other than the inimitable Mr. Benny Rubin. Mr. Packett and Mr. Marot, uh, Renault, excuse me, were played and were probably all too recognizably your obedient servant. Music is always composed and conducted by Signor Bernard Herman. Next Sunday night, we bring you, ladies and gentlemen, Only Angels Have Wings. A merry chronicle of the goings-on in the Central American tropics when a serious young lady of the chorus engaged in the frivolous business of cafe entertaining finds herself in the midst of some frivolous young gentlemen engaged in the serious business of flying the mail. Our guest star will be one of Hollywood's gayest and most attractive young women, Miss Joan Blondell. Ms. Blondell, you may recall, was prevented by illness from being with us last Sunday when we presented Mr. Deeds Goes to Town. Uh, incidentally, the comedy uh, based on Clarence Buddington Kellen's story, Opera Hat. And uh, so, until then, till next Sunday night, and only angels have wings, my sponsors, the makers of Campbell Soups, and all of us on the Campbell Playhouse remain, as always, obedient to yours. <laughs> Makers of Campbell Soups join Orson Welles in inviting you to be with us in the Campbell Playhouse again next Sunday evening when we present the recent Columbia Pictures Corporation success, Only Angels Have Wings, with Miss Joan Blondell as our guest.
In the meantime, if you've enjoyed tonight's Playhouse presentation, won't you tell your grocer so tomorrow when you order Campbell's vegetable soup? This is Ernest Chappell saying thank you and good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.